In addition to being able to upload files from a local location such as your shared network drive or desktop, we can also create files right from our OneDrive without having to leave the browser. When you click on the New button in OneDrive, you can create a new folder such as Annual Reports, click Create, then you've got your new folder, or you can create files such as a new Word document, Excel, or PowerPoint. Now, when I click Word, notice it doesn't open Word on my desktop, it opens up in another browser window. And this way I can create the document, and it's already connected to my OneDrive so that as I'm making changes to the document itself, it's actually saving in real time. Notice it goes from saving to saved pretty quickly, and that's because it's basically created from and syncing immediately to my OneDrive. Now, uh, you may notice my menu looks a little bit different than yours may at first, and that's because you have the option on the lower right hand corner of the ribbon menu up there in all of the apps, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, to switch from the simplified ribbon to the classic ribbon. So that makes it a little easier to use. For those of you who really appreciate the desktop layout and everything, this looks a lot more like that, right? Um, but if you're still lacking functionality, if there's something you're noticing that you don't have in the web version that you really need in the desktop version, for example, uh, if you're using Excel macros, macros only work in the desktop version, so you want to be able to run those in the browser. In those cases, you look at the top of your screen, and depending on the app you're in, you'll either see Open in Desktop App right next to Editing, or in this case, like Word, you'll have to choose Editing and then Open in Desktop App. That'll open up Word in the client application where you can continue to make changes exactly where you left off. And just like in the browser version, it's saving constantly. So as soon as you take a break from typing, it's going to be pushing up your changes to the cloud. Now it does take a little bit longer if you're using the desktop version just because it's got further to travel, right? Think about like a download and upload process. It's a little bit longer than if you're just making direct changes in the cloud. So we don't have to worry about clicking save. In fact, when we're finished making changes in the desktop version, we simply just close out of the window and we know that it's gonna save our changes. Now back in the browser, I'm gonna click continue here because I wanna make sure those desktop changes came through. So continue here in this case is kind of like a refresh button. So I click continue and there's my change that I made on the desktop. So that gives me peace of mind, just knowing that no matter which version I'm using, as long as the document lives in OneDrive, you know, it's cloud-based, then I have my recent changes uh, no matter where I'm working on them. Now up at the top, uh, one thing you want to remember to do whenever you're creating files in Word, Excel, or PowerPoint online, so the web app version um, especially, click on the document name where, where it's showing us the save status and rename that file. Because you can imagine if you create another Word document after this, but you forgot to rename it, you're gonna have document and document one and document two. <laughs> so nobody wants that, right? So we're gonna change the, the document to a specific name, such as uh, January 2021, perhaps. Maybe it's a monthly report. And I just hit enter. And then you can see I've got my new file name up there. Now, I also use this up here where, where we can rename the file. I use this sometimes to get context on the document too. And again, this works in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. But it tells me that this document lives in Megan Bowen's documents. And I'm acting as Megan Bowen now in this demo account, so that's me. And documents is just my OneDrive. So it may seem kind of obvious here, but as you use Microsoft 365 more, people are gonna start sending you links to documents where you don't actually know where the document is saved. They might've shared a link with you uh, to something in their OneDrive, could have been uh, something that they sent you in a Teams message that could live in SharePoint or OneDrive, or maybe it's from SharePoint, but getting that context and understanding where it saves might give you a better idea on how to interact with that user. For example, if it's just you and them, you may be able to be more blunt, perhaps, in your comments and more direct with your feedback. Whereas if you saw that it was saved in a team or a site that lots of people had access to, you might be more uh, cautious about the, wor the wording that you use, or you might uh, want to collaborate with more people before making a direct change, that kind of thing. So I click on the document title, see where it's saved, and that kind of helps guide how I collaborate going forward. One other thing here is version history. So we'll cover version history later, but just remember that from the, the title bar, you can actually access version history inside the document. You don't have to be outside of it. With that, I'm gonna go back to my OneDrive and I can do this a couple of ways. 
I've got documents here, which again shows me the context of this document, so I can click that and it'll take me back to OneDrive. Or remember when I first created the document, it opened a new tab in my browser, so I could simply click back to the other tab. So in that case, I'm just gonna close the document tab because I know it auto-saved and I'm back in OneDrive. Now, I like to scroll down and just make sure my changes were saved and I can see here, January 2021 was saved. Now let's go back to the top. I could show you, you know, a similar process in Excel and PowerPoint, but they're all very similar. Now, as for using the desktop or the web version, uh, Word, you're going to want to use the desktop mostly just when you have heavily formatted documents or uh, something that's not really rendering correctly in the browser. Um, Excel, mostly just when you're using macros, you're going to run into issues there and you'll want to use the desktop for those. PowerPoint, I've never had an issue using the, the web version, uh, but if you do, perhaps you have uh, some add-ins and tools that you're using on the desktop, you might want to open your presentations there. So uh, OneNote, I'll skip that for now, but if you did want to create a OneNote notebook, you can absolutely do that online. Uh, you can create forms for Excel, which is really just Microsoft Forms, uh, which we'll get into in the SharePoint chapter. But I do want to show you while we're here, you can actually create a link to another document. And the question comes up sometimes, when would I ever want to put a link in my OneDrive instead of just putting the file there? Well, sometimes there's a, a policy or a procedure or something that you want to have access to, but imagine if you download a copy of a policy and upload it to your OneDrive, you're not going to have the next update. When somebody goes to make a change to it, you're going to have the old version, and you might be operating and making decisions based on old information that's maybe no longer relevant and maybe non-compliant. So using links allows you to link to a specific document that does get the live updates, right, because you're linking to it where it lives, or this could even be a website. For example, I could link to nathetrainer.com and create, and that works just fine. And then I have kind of a bookmark, right, in my OneDrive, and I can just click on that URL, and it opens up in another tab here and takes me to that website. So you can kind of create uh, your, your own experiences by using that link, but it's really handy, especially think about the, those live documents instead of downloading and uploading. Now, one more thing, while we're thinking about using the web apps of documents, let's say you have a pre-existing file. You've already created it, but now you're ready to work on it some more. Well, when you open a file in OneDrive, it does open in the web version. So here we are, that same file I created, I can make additional changes to. Okay. And when I'm done, once again, I can close out. Now, if I wanna open it in the desktop immediately, I may not wanna to have to click on it, choose editing, choose open in desktop app, right? So there is a simpler process. So once the file has been created, you can simply select the file, choose open from the ribbon menu, and then choose open in app. And that's gonna be the desktop version of Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So your choices are browser or app or immersive reader. I'm gonna select a different document to show you the immersive reader. So this document, International Marketing Strategy, already has a bunch of content in it, not just my demo content. <laughs> so I'm gonna select that file, choose open, and then open an immersive reader. And I really like the immersive reader for, for many reasons, but I, I hope you'll see that for your, yourself here soon. But basically, I can play back this document to me if I'd rather listen to it and modify those settings for the voice. I can also change the text size and spacing if I'd like to. Okay, I got fonts, I've got contrast, and source formatting. So you can kind of modify it without actually making any changes to the document. This is really more of a consumption tool. So you can listen to it, you can read it, and it's gonna suit your preferences and your needs. Now grammar, for those of you who work in education might find this especially helpful, you can highlight specific word parts. So your nouns are now purple, your verbs are in red. Really nice to be able to break down sentences. And then reading preferences, you can change your line focus. So maybe you just want to look at a few lines at once, right? And you can scroll through the document. Or you can translate the whole document. So I'm going to choose translate. We'll choose Spanish. And whole document instead of word. So now I can see it's translating the whole document for me. And let me turn off line focus so you can see more. But you can see how quickly that, that does work that might otherwise take us quite a, quite a long time to get to these kind of results. And one last feature I'd like to show you, I'm gonna go back into my demo document here, the J January 2021 that I created. And a feature that I really appreciate is the ability to comment. 
Now, commenting may seem kind of old school, right? Because it's been around for a while, but I want you to remember this feature when we get into chapter three and we're talking about teams and conversations around documents, because it's slightly different. And there's, a, there's definitely a benefit and a usage for both. I'm not saying one is better than the other. So comments, if you haven't used those before, you'll find these in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And depending on your screen size, this button up here that says comments may actually just be the speech bubble. So just look for that speech bubble at least. So before I click new, I need to select what it is I'm commenting on. So maybe I start a new page. And then I'm gonna put in, let's see, one, two, three, four, A, B, C. So some really insightful text there. And then I'm gonna select what it is that I need modified and I'm going to click new in my comments panel that I have open now. And here maybe I'm going to collaborate with somebody, but remember the context of this demo. I am Megan Bowen, and I'm going to be asking somebody else to help me, but remember in OneDrive, everything is private to me until I share it with someone else. So let's see what happens. I'm going to at mention my colleague Alex, and I'm going to ask him to help me out with this. So Alex, can you please update this figure? Okay. and I can assign it as a task or just send it as a comment. If I assign it as a task, Alex can actually come here and check it off to show that it's done. If I send it as a comment, he can come here and reply to the comment if he'd like. So let's just send a comment. And because I at mentioned Alex, he's gonna get an email that says, hey, Megan mentioned you in a comment, and here's the piece of the document that she's talking about. It actually shows him the lines around where the comment lives so he gets the context. Um, but because Alex doesn't have access to this document that's private to me right now, it gives me a prompt and it says, hey, Alex doesn't have access to this item. They're not able to see or reply to your mention unless you give them access. So I do have to share and notify to proceed with this process. And when you do this, when you at mention somebody who doesn't yet have access and you click share and notify, they get, of course, the notification, but also edit access to the document. That's the only way they can respond to you in a comment. So I'm gonna click share and notify. Alex is granted access automatically. And now in his email, he has a link to this document and can come in here, make that change and reply to my comment. This concludes lesson three. I'll see you in lesson four.